My name is Tina Amper. I am the community manager for the Rules as Code Community of Practice here at the Digital Benefits Network at the Beck Center for Social Impact and Innovation at Georgetown University. Welcome to the launch webinar and information, information session for the Policy to Code Prototyping Challenge. Again, as we wait for more people to join us, please introduce yourselves in the chat. And if you can answer the question, what sparked your interest in this challenge and why are you excited about this challenge? All right, I wanna talk about our code of conduct. The Digital Benefits Network is, a, is dedicated to providing a harassment-free experience for everyone. We do not tolerate harassment of participants in any form. Please send us an email if you are being harassed or notice that someone else is being harassed. Please communicate respectfully and kindly during our session today. We encourage active participation from everyone and creating space for all to share their thoughts. Please normalize using correct pronouns and expressing yourself using I statements in our discussions. Be mindful and reflective in your participation today. Share openly and honestly. Note that this session is will be recorded. This session is recorded. We will share a video of the presentations today. We will also share a summary of the questions and answers that we're gonna do later. If you have any questions, use the raise hand feature or, or post, post your question in the chat for later discussions. Keep an eye on the chat for occasional shared links during the session. Please stay on mute unless asking a question or presenting. If you wanna share your learnings online, please use the hashtag rules as code. And here's the agenda for today. We're going to talk about uh, our policy to code challenge. We're gonna start with introductions from our host organizations, the DBN and the MDI, followed by an introduction to the rules as code approach. Then we will discuss details of the challenge and finally question and answer uh, portion. Thank you for spending your time with us today. We appreciate your interest in improving public benefits by experimenting with Gen AI technologies. The Digital Benefits Network is a project of the Beck Center. The Beck Center for Social Impact and Innovation is a nonprofit organization at Georgetown University in Washington, DC. We seek to improve people's daily lives by helping governments utilize data, design technology, and policy to better meet the needs of residents. You can learn more about the Beck Center and our work on our website, beckcenter.georgetown.edu. The Digital Benefits Network, the DBN, convenes practitioners who work in and around, in and alongside every level of government to spark dialogue, share resources, and support better digital delivery of public benefits and services in the U.S. We work across programs for food and nutrition like SNAP and WIC, health like Medicaid and CHIP, cash assistance, childcare, and unemployment insurance. You can learn more about the DBN's programming, newsletters, research on our website, digitalbenefitsnetwork.org. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our co-host from the Massive Data Institute, Angelica. Hello, my name is Angelica Dergerkar Grossman. She, her, I'm the Associate Director for the Massive Data Institute. The Massive Data Institute is an interdisciplinary research institute that sits in Georgetown's McCourt School of Public Policy. We work uh, across the university and disciplines, um, connecting with experts in computer science, data science, um, public health, public policy, uh, really to focus around um, addressing the societal issues and the impact of public policy in ways that improve people's lives through responsible evidence-based research. And we're focused on massive data made meaningful. Thank you. 
Um, thank you so much, Tina and Angelica, for kicking us off. Um, hi, everyone, and happy Friday. Uh, my name is Arielle Kennan. I use she, her pronouns, and I lead the Digital Benefits Network, um, where much of our research is focused on rules as code. Um, it is wonderful to have such an incredible group from across the country, and I know we also have some international um, colleagues with us here today as well. Uh, um, we have people from a variety of backgrounds and experience levels, so I wanted to take just a few minutes to ground us in a shared definition of rules as code and share um, some of our community resources ahead of diving into the challenge itself. So helpfully, actually, some of our international colleagues um, have sparked a movement and definition that can help ground us. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, defines rules as code as an unofficial version of the rules, e.g. laws and regulations, in a machine consumable form, which allows rules to be understood and actioned by computer systems in a consistent way. Currently, um, every system um, in the US that's checking for eligibility, um, applying or enrolling um, or managing benefits has rules um, encoded in it. However, the, those current implementations um, require going to many sources, a tangled mess of rules um, that often may conflict with each other across programs and also vary by state. state. Um, it also requires an immense amount of interpretation um, of the goals in a policy as it transforms into that code. Um, however, we think that there is a better way to handle this. Under a future approach to rules as code for benefits eligibility, uh, the policy laws or regulations would be translated into both plain language logic flows and computer consumable code developed in a standardized syntax. That can then be implemented in digital systems, including benefits applications, eligibility screeners, and policy analysis tools, um, and more. This would allow any stakeholder um, to review the legislation or regulation, the plain language logic, and the code side by side, and know that all are official and ready for implementation. We believe we can improve the transparency, efficiency, and also open new uh, possibilities in benefits service delivery and policy making if the code for the rules is standardized and open. So let's look at this um, in action using a real um, SNAP rule um, from New York on income eligibility calculations. Um, this borrows from some of the work from our colleagues from Access NYC. I saw Saurabh is on this call, so thank you for joining us. Um, on the left, um, we see a rule from the New York SNAP source book. Um, so that's the official policy book um, and guidelines. In the middle, we see a logic chart developed by the team at the New York City Mayor's Office for Economic Opportunity um, that explains that rule. And on the right, we see the computer consumable code that powers the Access NYC screening tool. And then what the end user sees, our resident sees on the front end um, when they're actually screening um, for benefits. Um, so that was the fast and furious version um, of rules as code. Um, we collect um, not only our own research, but also um, resources from across the ecosystem, across the world um, on the Digital Benefits Hub. Um, there is a page on there um, available at the link here um, that has a page completely dedicated to digitizing policy and rules as code. Um, there you will find research, examples, um, code repositories, case studies, demo videos. Um, and if there's something you would like to add um, please use the submission form um, linked to in the footer of the hub. We are always growing um, those resources. Um, also, um, in Rules as Code, we run a community of practice, um, which creates space for knowledge sharing, learning, collaboration, and technical assistance on Rules as Code approaches. Um, exactly like this event and this challenge, um, truly created um, in response to needs and ideas that we've heard um, from within that community. Um, earlier this year, we launched a web presence for the community, um, as well as a Google group um, for asynchronous sharing. Um, it already has over 100 people in it um, and welcome you to come join us there um, if you're interested. Um, if you have any questions um, throughout the event today, please put them in the chat and we will respond to you. Um, and I will now pass uh, to Lisa to take us into the challenge. Great, thank you so much. Uh, and I just wanna make sure that um, everyone is able to see the slides. Can you just give me a thumbs up since there's two different modes of seeing them on the screen, thumbs up? 
People are seeing slides. Not seeing thumbs up. <laughs> okay, got it. Excellent. Um, great. Uh, so uh, my name is Lisa Singh. Uh, I am the director of the Massive Data Institute and so excited to be partnering with Beck Center on this. Uh, we, uh, I'm gonna walk you through the challenge as quickly as I can. I'm sure there'll be questions afterwards, um, but let's get started. Let's go ahead and great. Um, so the challenge is focused on trying to understand how and whether we can use current um, artificial gen generative artificial intelligence technologies to help us with our rules as code problem. So can we um, use generative AI to translate different government policies into um, our final set of rules that are consumable uh, by a computer um, and into plain language as well. So there's different parts of this process and we're not sure whether or not generative AI can be useful in any of these parts uh, or which parts um, in particular. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so let me just make sure we're all on the same page as to what I mean by generative AI. Um, so if we think of machine learning and just kind of AI more broadly, uh, for a long time, the thought was that you needed to have um, training data that was specific to the tasks that you were interested in doing, and you would come up with thousands of examples and use those to help train and build a model. Um, and what ended up happening was that worked for some problems, but as we needed more contextual information to solve these prediction problems, um, classic machine learning wasn't as effective. And um, so the question became, what, uh, what contextual information can we obtain? Um, and is there a way to obtain that contextual information at scale? And so huge, huge amounts of data are necessary to think about contextual information. And that's what was used um, to, uh, to train large language models, which have sort of become the brains of generative AI. Um, large language models and in, in, in neural networks um, are the components that are used to uh, focus, that, that are used to um, uh, create generative AI models. Um, and generative AI focuses on teaching machines on how to use this large scale data to provide that context that we didn't have in those older types of models. And that context is necessary for generating all kinds of new information. For example, um, original, perhaps creative, perhaps um, content that may be textual, that may be images, that may be music. And our question that we're going to consider today is whether or not it can be rules as code. There's lots of different generative AI models that are out there. Some of them are public, some of them are not. GPT-4 is an example of a generative model. BERT is an example of a generative model. And there's lots of tools that have been built on these generative models. So ChatGPT is an example of a tool that was built on top of a large language model, GPT-4. Um, and so we're interested in exploring both layers, uh, whether you use a tool uh, like ChatGPT or whether you use the generative model directly and try to fine tune it for a specific part of uh, the rules as code process, uh, both are interesting um, ways to think about um, generative AI technologies. Next slide, please. Um, so this challenge focuses on seeking experiments that will test the use of any of these different generative AI tools. And these, uh, the testing can be done in any of the scenarios, any parts of that life cycle I was just talking about. So can we translate US public benefit policies into software code? Can we translate US public policy benefits um, into plain language logic models, that middle step that Ariel was showing earlier? And what about translating between different coding languages? We know that uh, generative AI models are quite good at writing code automatically. And so can we utilize that knowledge to um, create different components that we may need for translating between languages? Um, and are there recommendations of other scenarios uh, that can enhance the policy implementation through digitiz digitization? Next slide, please. 
Okay, so which programs? Well, there's lots and lots of different public benefit programs, and we've highlighted the ones that uh, we think would be most interesting to focus on. So, um, or that have already had that already have a basis of rules as code as well. SNAP, WIC, Medicaid, um, uh, TANF, ba basic income, from income, UI, SSI, tax credits, childcare. Um, these are some different examples. And if there's another one that you have a strong interest in please throw it in the chat or, or contact uh, the organizers to talk about it. Okay, so what are some of the requirements and rules? Um, we're gonna want all the code to be well documented. We're gonna want all the code and documentation used in the prototypes to be open and available. So we're not looking for proprietary solutions. Um, and we wanna make sure that this open and available code can be incorporated into the research that we're continuing to conduct here at Georgetown. Um, we wanna make sure that we only use policy documentations that are publicly available unless you have permission to share internal documentation. We wanna ensure that you have the rights and permissions to use the data and the code in your prototype. Um, there shouldn't be any personally identifiable information that you share in your prototype or your documentation. And we want to use a sandbox environment, not a production system here. Um, so we are going to be using a GitHub classroom technology to help support this competition, uh, this challenge. Um, thank you so much, Lisa, for kicking us off. Um, so who is this challenge for? Um, we um, hope that both individuals and teams um, join us in the challenge. Um, we encourage technologists, policy specialists, um, academics, including students, um, program administrators, and other practitioners from all sectors um, are welcome to participate. Um, teams with at least one technologist and one policy specialist um, will benefit from that collaboration between different domain expertise. Um, we also encourage all teams to consider public sector and beneficiary perspectives as part of their prototype. Individuals are also encouraged to join forces um, to form cross-sector and cross-disciplinary teams. And I'll share a little bit more about some of the matchmaking support um, that we're able to offer in just a little bit. Um, so how do it, how does it work? Um, to participate um, in the Policy to Code Challenge, uh, individuals or teams must complete an application form. The deadline for the submission is May 22nd, 2024. Uh, the DBN and MDI teams will select up to 10 teams to join the challenge. Um, we will then be announcing the selected teams the week of June 3rd. And then throughout the summer, we'll be prototyping together. So once selected, um, participants will have approximately three months to complete their testing. Throughout the summer, we'll host monthly touch points to share progress, solicit feedback from fellow participants, and receive support from coaches to help on problem solving issues um, with the experiments. Um, teams are asked to join at least two of the three monthly touch points. Um, we've listed some proposed dates and times. Um, these are also on the website of June 25th, July 23rd, and August 22nd. Um, and then the challenge will culminate in Demo Day at the Digital Benefits Network's signature event, BenCon 2024, um, scheduled for September. Um, breaking news um, to save the date for September 17th and 18th for BenCon. Um, participants um, will, uh, at the demo day, the uh, participants will present their experiments and prototypes, tinkering and other developments um, to the community for feedback, awareness, and evaluation. Um, participating teams will be invited um, for those in-person um, demos as an option, as well as a virtual option um, if someone cannot make it um, to join us in DC. Um, and each member of the demo team will be awarded a $500 honorarium in accordance with the Georgetown University honoraria policy, which is linked to on the website as well. Um, and that's if their institution allows. Um, the coaches and organizers um, at Demo Day will also award non-monetary prizes for categories such as best use of open tools, best public sector demo, community choice, design simplicity, um, et cetera. 
And then in early 2025, um, the DBN and MDI will co-author and publish a report summarizing the challenge activities, documenting the findings from the prototypes, and highlighting the suitability of LLM frameworks and usage. Um, building on findings from the challenge, um, the public report will also recommend next steps for using cross-sector multidisciplinary approaches to scaling and standardizing how benefits eligibility rules are written and shared. Um, so if you are looking to join a team and you don't already have a team um, within your organization or across organizations, um, or um, you are a team that wants some additional expertise um, on your team, um, we have created um, a form and a listing um, for matchmaking. Um, so hopefully people can team up. Um, so there is a link to the matchmaking form. Um, so fill that out. It asks you if you are an individual or a team up top. Um, your info will then be shared on the matchmaking section of the policy to code site. Um, we also have an option if you do not want to publicly share your email address um, for some reason, we can help shepherd those requests through the rules as code at georgetown.edu email. Um, you'll see that on there. And then um, you can browse the listings on the, on the policy to code site um, and contact any listed individuals um, to team up. Um, there's already at least one um, individual looking for a team um, on there if you go check that out. Um, on the Policy to Code site, we have also collected tools and resources um, that may be useful in prototyping, including rules frameworks, um, large language models, and other technology tools. Um, and we've started a list um, of some of the program policy mon models as well. Um, I just want to note that listing a tool does not designate endorsement. Um, we are just trying to share information um, that's out there. Um, we will keep building um, these out over the course of the challenge. Um, and if there's a tool or resource that you would like to see added to the list, please send us a note at rulesiscode at georgetown.edu, and we would be very glad to add that. Um, I also mentioned briefly before the Digital Benefits Hub has our page on digitizing policy and rules as code. Um, we also have a page on automation and AI um, that hosts resources on how to responsibly, ethically, and equitably use artificial intelligence and automation um, with a strong consideration given to mitigating harms and biases. Um, so wanted to give a quick pitch before we go into Q&A of like why to participate um, and why we would love to have you be part um, of Policy to Code. Um, there's a great opportunity here to gain insights into how generative AI um, technologies, specifically large language models, can be utilized to translate policy documents into plain language logic models and software code under the rules as code approach. Um, we also have a great opportunity to analyze the potential benefits and limitations of using generative AI tools um, and really what it might look like um, to create more efficiency and accuracy um, in these uh, software systems on the other side. Um, we also really support um, cross-disciplinary um, collaboration um, between technologists, policy specialists, and practitioners across sectors um, in developing innovative and new solutions um, in this space and others. Um, and so hope this is an opportunity where we can be really learning um, from each other. Um, we also are really excited to do um, some more hands-on work um, with this community um, and really, really not only bringing our expertise, um, but starting to um, put it into code um, and really show um, what's possible, um, as well as help us really recommend um, the future path and what's possible um, with these technologies. Um, and we're trying to really ground this in real world um, approaches. And I know that we have uh, many practitioners um, in our community um, who are people who actually um, work and operate um, in these systems that are live for our residents today. Um, and so I think there's a lot that we can be learning um, that we can really be thinking about future applications um, into those real real world um, systems. Um, so thank you so much for joining.